Hey, Shalom, I can First off, I want to say, Tawada, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this video. Double honors to the elders. And Shalom to you brothers out there that's doing this truth and sincerity and really waiting for the coming of the Lord. This video will be called, The Demons Are Trying to Consume You. And that's very true. These demons are around day in and day out, okay, trying to continue to stay in a vessel, okay, or if they leave that vessel, they're trying to go find another vessel, okay? So they're seeking day in and day out to keep you away from being saved, man. That's their job, okay? Their job is to keep you distracted and keep you busy in other things outside of this truth, this word, okay? Because like it says in Job 9.24, the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. So this is his rulership. This is Satan's rulership. Okay, ruled by the physical counterpart of Satan, which is you Edomite, Esau, the so-called white race on earth. Okay, this is their rulership, man. This is not our kingdom. All right. So when Satan's rulership is done is when Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, when he comes back, Satan's rulership is over. And Satan knows this. So he want to take out as many souls as he possibly can that the Lord allow, allows him to take out because overall, you know, we know the Most High is overall, man. He calls the shots, okay? He calls the shots. Like it says in um, Isaiah 45 and seven, I create evil, I create peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So we know who's in charge here, but who's in charge, okay, gave, uh, Satan the role of taking over the world for this time period, this time being until your house shot comes back. So they're trying to consume as many souls as they possibly can. Okay, so I got some scriptures uh, I'm going to go uh, into about these demons. All right, I'm gonna start at Luke chapter eight, verse twenty-six, uh, and it's right after the story, right after when Yahweh Shai was on the ship with his disciples. Okay, and the, and the waters were real bad, okay, and they got scared, and, the, and, the, and Yahweh Shai calmed the waters down. So this is when they arrive from the boat, okay? Luke chapter 8, verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abide in any house, but in the tombs. Now, you know, if you see somebody that ain't got no clothes on, okay, walk around with no clothes, they got a demon on them, man. No, they got demons on them, plural, multiple demons. Okay, a guy in that, a guy in that state is not, it's obviously not in his right mind. Verse 28, when he saw Yahweh Shai, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Yahweh Shai, thou son of Yahweh the most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Okay. For oftentimes it had caught him. Oftentimes it had caught him, meaning the demons was consuming him day in and day out, man. He couldn't escape those demons. That's what it means by oftentimes. Day in and day out, he was consumed and he was under the power of those demons. Okay? And he was kept bound with chains and with fetters. Now, guess what? If you got chains and fetters on you, you can't get out, man. You're not going to get out unless you have the key. Okay? You ain't going to magically uh, uh, pick the lock, man with your mind, you are bound down with these chains. And who is the key? Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the Most High and the Son. That's the only way that those chains are, are gonna, get, um, gonna get loose. Because before any of us, any of the, uh, the ones that have woken up to this truth, okay, and understand, before we woke up, we was bound by them chains. Okay, we didn't know nothing. 
okay? Everything that we believed in, everything that our our spiritual vibration every day was off the spirit of Satan, okay? You got some will say, well, you know, I wasn't that bad in the world. You know, I, I wasn't that bad of a person. Guess what? When you don't have the Lord in your spirit, your spirit is unclean. Unclean is unclean. Because guess what? There's many people that you can measure and say, well, he's a lot he's a lot more wicked than this person, that person. Guess what? Whatever measure of wickedness they are, they don't have the Lord, the most high and the son at the end of the day. They gonna give you they gonna be left behind, man. They ain't gonna make it, so it don't matter. All right. So it says, uh, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he, and he break the bands, right? And was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Yahweh asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Yeah, Legion, meaning a soldier of demons, man, was in him. That's why he was so bound by them chains. That's why he was naked. He was, come on, naked, walking around like those demons totally had his spirit totally had his soul he was fully consumed okay these demons are looking for people to consume okay verse 31 and they besought him that he would not command them to go out of the deep go uh, go into the deep Salak. 32 and there were and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man, those unclean spirits, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran bodily down a steep place into the lake, uh, a steep place into the lake, and were choked where they drowned. All right? So those demons, like I said, those demons are real spirits, man, a real evil demonic nasty spirits okay and like I said those spirits are trying to keep you into anything and everything outside of this truth outside of this word because when you become in this word okay and when you become meditating day in and day out on this word and you believe in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai okay then a clean spirit enters your spirit which is the comforter the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth Okay, that the most high the sun sends down. Okay, that's the only way you're going to be protected from these demons consuming you. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The whole job is to consume you, to, to keep you distracted all the way into destruction. Okay, so the key is, is just to stay on the Lord, period, and, for, and forsake everything else that don't matter. All right, I'm going to go from there. To Luke chapter 9, verse 37. Luke chapter 9, verse 37. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him, and behold, who is to him? Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cried out, and it tarried him that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departed, departed, departed from him. So he was asking the Lord to depart that demon from his son, because his son basically lost all control of his spirit, man. He just like totally possessed, okay? Like the exorcist or something, man. Just totally possessed by these demons, okay? Now check it out. Now in this kingdom, in this rulership, okay, with technology, you got these movies. Now all these different scary movies, you people go see, and they can't wait until the next scary movie come out and the next scary movie, and they're pretty much predictable. But those people in those theaters don't realize how real it is, man. To them, it's just a fairy tale movie. Go get your popcorn candy. No, man, it's no joke. Okay, and a lot of these demonic movies got little kids that's possessed that's possessed by demons and you know and and a lot of those movies too those demons can jump from the kid now it's on the mom now they're trying to get it off the mom jump from the mom now it's on the dad 
They're trying to get out of debt. Okay? Or, for example, that those people move out the house, somehow they escape the demon. Then the next then the next family moves in and the demon jumps on their child and it continues and continues. And that's true, man. Because those demons are looking for another host, another body to continue in different vessels and take over and destroy. That's the whole journey, man, to totally destroy. So those movies are realer. It has a realer concept than what people think. Because why? They don't understand what a demon is. They have no knowledge. They're asleep during darkness. Okay? I got a message for those people who don't know what a demon is and don't understand this truth. Wake up, get in front of the mirror, look in the mirror, and there goes the demon. It's you. Because guess what? If you don't have this truth, you don't have the light. You're in darkness. And if you're in darkness, those one of the uh, demons, those demons dwell within you. Okay? Uh, it says, verse 40, And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Yahweh answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. Right. Like I said, like the exorcist stuff, man. Like the exorcist. That young boy had no control, man. That's why he said the demon threw him down, man. Fought, made him fall and tear open his skin. His leg, knees, or whatever. But the point is he had no control because he was totally consumed by demons, by the evil spirit. And Yahweh Shah rebuked and Yahweh Shah rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Right. So Yahweh Shah was, was, was rebuking those spirits and taking them out. Okay. But it shows you what? It shows you that he, these miracles that the Lord was doing, but like the topic says in this video, the demons are trying to consume you. Okay. These demons are real. They was real in that time and they're real in this time. All right. Because that was during the Roman time. America ain't nothing but Rome all over again. Okay. According to, according to scriptures and according to common sense, man. It, it's nothing but the same spirits coming back again. The same Romans, the same prophets. They're just recycling. But the difference between Rome then and Rome now is that the entertainment is on a whole other level, man. It ain't just warriors fighting, okay, in a in a stadium, man. It's just, I mean, it's technology on top of technology. Matter of fact, when you look at the TV, right, from a kid on up, it's, it's meant to brainwash you to think of the TV of a whole nother world. It's just a whole nother world. So you get invested into the whole of the world. You become uh, infatuated with the whole nother world. That's why when people, when they see a celebrity, they get all in awe and get all excited because it's like they're seeing like a god or something. They're seeing something out of this world because why? Psychologically, they've been watching it on this TV screen and it's like a whole nother world. But it's just demons, man. It's just another, it's just a huge tool they use to manipulate, okay, and push their demonic vibration on the world. Okay, that's why I don't watch too much TV. I watch a little sports. But other than that, uh, uh, man, I try to stay away from everything else, okay? Outside of the news and and, and um, not CNN because they full of shit. But, you know, just on YouTube and researching day in and day out and realizing uh, uh, how close it is for the Lord's coming. The prophecies, okay? Watching because the Lord commands you to watch, all right? So he won't catch you like a thief. Because the people that's consumed by these demons, that's how the Lord is going to catch them like a thief. Because those demons got them thinking that ain't nothing happening. Just continue continue on in this world and make plans for 10 years, 5 years, 20 years out. Okay? You're making all these plans. Those demons got these people making all these plans. When the ones who has the clean spirit, this truth, they waiting for the Lord to disrupt everybody's plans, man. All right? So, uh, I'm going to go from there to Luke chapter 11. 
Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 24. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest. Right. He's seeking what rest? He's walking through what dry places? According to the scriptures, all right, which I'm going to go to a precept in a second. This word is like living waters. Okay. So that dry, those dry places are dry vessels, dry bodies. Okay. Humans that don't have the Lord within their spirit. So the demons is cast out of one person and is looking for another unclean spirit. Okay. I mean, uh, another empty vessel, a dry vessel, so they can put in their unclean spirit within that vessel. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pause that and go to the precept real quick. And I'm going to come back to that. The precept is John chapter 7, starting at verse 37. Okay. So let me get it real quick. John chapter 7, starting at 37. All right. And the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahweh Shah stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Okay. He that believe on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Right. Waters out of, out of his vessel, man. Living waters, because his word is living waters. 39. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Yahweh Shai was not yet glorified. Okay? Meaning, in other words, when the Lord Yahweh Shai was on the scene, okay, when he got crucified and when he was to get caught back up in the air and go back to the right hand side of the Most High, then he was going to send down the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, okay, unto the man that believe on him to teach his word. But back to the main point is that out of his belly shall flow, shall flow rivers of living waters. So when you dry, you don't have the water in you. So you thirst. Okay? That's like when you're real thirsty and your mouth is dry, you need water back. Okay. That's the example. So let's go back. Okay. And let's go back to Luke chapter 11. Starting at 24, and then we're going to read our way through the point. Okay. Back to Luke chapter 11, verse 24. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places. Okay, he walked through dry vessels that do not have the light, the Lord. Seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return into my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Uh-oh. Meaning what? That person... Uh, meaning that unclean left because that person woke up, that person believed, right? That person was 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 walking the right path, so that person had the clean spirit on him. So the the unclean spirit had to go, had to get out that house to go find somebody else to consume. But say it says when it don't find, and it says you know what I'm gonna go back into that vessel. So it says he find it swept and garnished, meaning it's dry. So the water could have been in that person and that person lost that water. Now that person is dry again. And they say he findeth and swept he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and take to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now he's like, look, I'm gonna totally destroy this person now. I'm gonna totally consume it now. That's why I said he take unto him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And seven is seven means completion, so it's it could be without number, meaning it's not a particular a particular number, just a lot of demons, a legion of demons, okay, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, right? So, and that's another uh, point that when you come in His truth, okay, and you taste His word, and the Lord is 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 waking you up which is a blessing, you can't go back into the world and diss the Lord, man. 
you can't turn your back on the Lord and now you don't believe in the truth no more the truth don't matter like the Lord said the, a righteous man falls seven times and get back up again the Lord knows who believes in his truth and just having trouble or having problems that they got to work out okay but to the people who just forsake the Lord like the truth don't matter no more and, and basically just totally turn their back on the Lord that that person is going to get multiple demons on them man stronger than they had beforehand before they woke up so you really going to be totally 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 bugged out okay that goes for men most importantly and it also goes for you women that claim you believe okay you believe all right you reading the scriptures okay you really trying to to do right as a woman of the most high yahweh yahweh shy guess what turn your back okay you're gonna be on the strip somewhere stripping for for pennies okay you're gonna be totally totally destroyed as a woman all right so it goes for man and woman sons and daughters okay of yahweh shy yahweh bashim yahweh shy all right so um i'm gonna go from there to luke Luke chapter 13, all right? Starting at 10. Luke chapter 13, verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmities 18 years and was bowed down and, and could in no wise lift up herself. Right, those demons had her basically like where she was in a state where she couldn't, she had no control of her muscles, nerve damage. Okay, so she was just totally engulfed by them demons, man. Verse twelve, and when Yahweh saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, "Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmities." Okay, what does it mean? What does it mean, thou art loose from thine infirmities? The Lord was casting that unclean spirit out of her man and healing her verse 13 and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified Yahweh the most high so once again those demons so you see somebody real sick okay and and they have no control over their bodies okay those are demons those are sickness but those See, the white men give those sicknesses a name. But those names ain't, ain't nothing but just different demons, man. It's like scoliosis or, or um, Alzheimer's. It's just demons, man. It's just a name. They just put a name on that particular demon. So anytime a person acts like this, they say, okay, it's that demon. It's the, Alzheimer. it's the Alzheimer's demon. All right? But the thing is this. Matter of fact, let me uh, let, let me tell a quick story why I brought up Alzheimer's. I have a grandpa, man. And my grandpa, he has Alzheimer's. And um, it was like a year or two ago, we had a get-together at my aunt's house, which is my dad's sister. And um, so this is my dad's dad. And uh, I'll pull up. I pull up to the to the house to my aunt's house, and he's in the grass, like literally picking grass, sweating. So I get out. I'm like, "Hey, what's up, Grandpa?" I'm like, "You, you all right, man? You sweating like crazy? It's hot. It was like a hundred degrees that day." I said, "You need some water, man." I said, "What What are you doing out here?" He tells me, "I'm picking the grass so I can go plant it back at my house." Literally picking grass that you mow, saying, I'm going to go plant it back at my house. Now, only a demon, only an unclean spirit or demon could convince you of some shit like that. That's some scary stuff, man. These, these demons are real. So I'm sitting there looking at them like, this is weird. So I go, even though I understand it was demons, but like I said, when you see it, you just like, you know it's demons. It's like, damn, man. Like, he really don't realize what's going on in his mind. Because that demon has totally consumed him. All right? I go in the house, okay, and you have certain people in my family, 
I'm telling him, I'm like, why is he outside? Why y'all allowed him to be outside picking grass, man, pretending he going to plant in his house? They, those demons, because they demons too. So those demons, all right, because they don't, uh, uh, pretty much most of my family don't believe. So those demons that's within them was feeding the demon that was in my grandpa and making him think that it's okay to think that you can pick the grass and go plant it back in your house. Okay? They even come in the house giving them more bags to fill up more bags of grass. I'm looking at this shit, man. I'm like, man, look at these demons, man. Okay? That ain't nothing but, first of all, you're not supposed to lay out a red carpet for the demon. Okay? Other demons are going to lay out other red carpets for other demons to, to make the demon even stronger and stronger. These demons work together. Okay? So that's why I'm telling that story uh, to make, try to make it short, but I'm telling that story to make a point, man, is that these demons totally consume, okay? And other people that do not have the word, they're gonna help that demon succeed, okay? Because they don't have the light themselves, all right? So when you come in this truth, you see that very well. Okay, so while you sitting there looking at the whole family like, man, it's crazy stuff, man. Your family is sitting there like, oh, he crazy. <laughs> he just, he picking that grass. No, nah, man, they have no understanding. That's why you have to thank the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, every day that he has woke you up in his truth. Okay, and then you have to pray every day that he keeps these demons from you. Every day you got to pray, man. Okay? And, and try your best not to forget to pray. Because day in and day out, you need that prayer to keep those demons at bay, man. <laughs> they're around, but they're not overtaking you. You know, you're able to deal with them to the point where they're not overtaking you. Okay? And you're basically under the care of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and his angels day in and day out until the Lord returns. And when the Lord returns, hey, that's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? You made it if you endure to the end. All right? So I just wanted to tell that quick story real quick. All right? Um, now I'm going to go to Luke chapter 22. Okay? Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read verse 1 through 3. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Right. Uh, they were seeking how they might kill the Lord, Shai. Verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, okay, being the number of one of the twelve. So Judas was one of the twelve disciples. Verse 4. You know what? I'm going to stop at verse. I'm going to read three again. I'm going to stop at three. Then entered Satan into Judas, uh, Judas, surname Iscariot, being one of the number of the twelve. Right. Now, Judas, that demon came on him and he betrayed the Lord. Okay. As we, as the scriptures say. He, matter of fact, since I'm saying that, let me just read all the way through it. So like it. Verse four. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Right. How Judas was going to basically betray the Lord and turn him in, okay, to the Romans, okay, so they could kill the Lord. Yahweh Shai. Verse 5. And they were glad and, and coveted to him, coveted to give him money. Basically, he sold out, man. Judas sold out. Okay? But like I said earlier, I read, it said, then entered Satan into him. That unclean spirit convinced him, that nasty scum of a spirit convinced Judas to turn in the Lord, man. That had to be a cold spirit for you to know that's the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay? You know it is, but then somehow... An unclean spirit in you convince you to turn against the Lord and turn the men to get killed, man. Boy, boy, boy. 
That's a hell of a demon right there. Verse 6, and he promised and sought opportunity to portray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Right, he sought opportunity to get that money, man. He sold it out. And a lot of people today are selling out, are straight sellouts, man. They'll rather have money, okay, than the Lord to come down to ever be king on earth, man, and to reign on earth and righteousness on earth. They'll rather be, the, especially these celebrities, they'll rather be looked up as looked up at uh as gods than the Lord come back and they gotta come back to life, come back to to reality that you that 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 you are not Yahweh Shai. You are not to be worshipped. Because that's all celebrities are, man. They want you, they want to, for you to believe they're in this mythical world and to worship them as gods. Okay? So like I said, that Judas is here again today. <laughs> you know, I definitely got an idea who he is. Okay? But... You know, all you brothers know what that is. But uh, so, yeah, so the point is is made on that. Satan, the main point is these unclean spirits are coming into bodies to convince you to do the total opposite of good, the total opposite of righteous, and to basically seduce you into being totally wicked. All right. I'm going to go from there to John. Okay. John chapter 5 and I'm going to start at um, I'm going to start at verse 12 John chapter 5 verse 12 okay then asked they him what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk so these people are asking this man who couldn't walk but the Lord healed him Okay, so he so they're asking him, like, hold up, like how are you walking? Okay, and what man caused this to be? Verse 13. And he that was healed was not who it was. I mean he didn't he didn't say who it was. For Yahweh Shai had conveyed himself away. And multitude and a multitude a multitude being in that place, afterward Yahweh Shai find of him in the temple. The guy that the uh the guy that the Lord healed, okay, from the guy couldn't walk and now the guy can walk. That was a miracle that the Lord did upon him. And said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahweh Shai which had made him whole. Okay. But the point and that I want to uh keen in on. Is it said sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Right. So by you doing the wrong thing and being wicked, okay, and doing total opposite of what the Lord um, uh, is telling you to do, these demons, you're leaving passages away, a big gap, a, a big hole in your body for the demon just to go right in, okay. And actually inhabit your vessel. All right? Because why? Because you're living in sin. Now, we all fall short. Okay? We're not perfect. But that's why the Lord, Yahweh Shai, died, man. That's why he was the ultimate sacrifice. So that through belief and faith, the Israelites, us, okay, the 12 tribes, which are you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, you make up the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? We, through belief and faith on him, we're covered by his blood, his perfect blood. Not that we are perfect, but he is perfect. So he died for our sins. The ones who believe and have faith on him will be covered by that, okay? But if you don't, if you don't believe in him at all, you just being wicked, man. These demons, like I said, these demons are gonna consume you. Okay? So just know that seeing these people all jacked up around the world, okay, one leg, uh um, 
in a coma, paralyzed, um, you know, just different sickness on earth. Okay, those are different demons. Okay, those are different demons. Um, and if you notice, sickness is at all time, man. Year and year in and year out, sickness rise up. Okay. Now we know these these uh real quick this these GMO food and these everything that's causing people's bodies to be ill, but those bodies are being caused to be even more ill because their spirits are unclean. Because their spirits are unclean. Okay, so they have they have unclean spirits within them. So they all jacked up. So just know that hey, sinning and doing the wrong thing. You never know what the Lord, Yahweh Shah, will bring upon you. So you better think about that scripture. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. All right? I'm going to go from there to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 to 3. And Yahweh Shah passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Okay, now the Lord's disciples said that, proving that they knew that a person, a son, like in this case, can suffer, can suffer from something because of what their parents did. Meaning the child can suffer and can and can be paid back. Okay? Through something coming coming upon uh, their son or daughter, okay, that's they knew that was common. That's why it says, "Who did the sin? This man or his parents?" So they knew that. But this was a special case, and you're gonna find out when I keep reading. So it says, "Who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind?" Yahweh Shai answered, "Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him." Right. So just to finish uh, the scripture, so you know, that particular boy, he was made blind just for the miracle, just for the manifestation uh, of the Most High in Yahweh Shai, that Yahweh Shai is the son of Yahweh. He was made blind only for that purpose. That's heavy, man. That is heavy. Came out the womb. All right, he was blind just for that day, just for that moment, just for that time, so the Lord could create that miracle and give him back his sight. Show you how special and how beautiful, okay, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is, man. The power, the power is that high, okay. But the only way to escape these demons, man, to escape these demons, okay, is to respect that power. Okay, believe in that power. Believe in Yahweh while you have a shot. Stay within his truth. Okay, have patience. The Lord is coming, man. You can't lose patience, man. The Lord is coming. Okay, at some point, any day now, any day, it's close. He is at the door. Okay, we know Yahweh Shah is on the right hand side of Yahweh in a whole other realm up there. Okay. But any day now, Yahweh's going to tell Yahweh Shai, go get him. Okay? And you got to have a confidence in that day. And the only way to have a confidence is to not be consumed by these demons. Because the ones that are consumed by these demons are not going to have any confidence in hell that the Lord going to get them. Because why? They, are, they have become a demon, a flat out demon themselves. Okay? Because that, those demons... Those unclean spirits have settled in that vessel for so long that it's just totally consumed. You know what I mean? You're not a person with a couple of demons in them that you got to work out. No, you're just a flat out full demon. So I hope that was edifying to you brothers and to you sisters. Okay? If you believe, keep the faith. Okay? Keep the faith, man. Keep the faith and don't let these demons consume you. I want to say the water again. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to give me the spirit to do this video. Double honors to the elders that rule well. And shalom to you brothers and sisters out there. 
that's doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.